Welcome back guys, this is Shane. So today's video I'm going to compare the Boss Katana 100 Mark II up against the Fender Mustang GTX 100. I've had a chance to use both of these amplifiers now extensively over the last few days. I've shot reviews of them both and really understand both of them. Initially this particular video was going to be broken up into four different sections until I realized these amps are vastly different to each other and the comparison might not be all that worthwhile in a conventional sense. Just apples to apples but they're not really apples one's an orange and one's an apple so they're aimed i think at two different types of people and depending on your type of style and what you prefer you might prefer one over the other so i'm going to discuss some of the pros and cons of using them both and which one i think is the best and why for certain types of things both are going to be better in different situations for different types of players and people so i'm going to try and cover everything i've learned about both of these amps since i purchased the katana and the since the fender has arrived at the house Let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about the clean tones and this will show you just how vastly different each of these amplifiers are. So the Boss Katana has a clean tone that you just set via a button on the front. There's a variation control button so you can also get a second clean tone. But it's essentially a very simple amplifier. The clean tone sounds great. It was a little ice picky to begin with but thanks to the Global EQ I got a great sound out of the clean tone and it handles external pedals extremely well. It also handles internal pedals extremely well. So if you layer up a digital effect within the amplifier on the clean channel it's going to sound great. And you also notice just how much clean headroom it's got in both situations. If you plonk a high gain overdrive on top of that clean channel, you can push it as loud as you like. It's pretty crazy just how great that is. <laughs> Now, in terms of the Fender Mustang GTX 100, I don't think it takes external pedals anywhere near as well as the Katana, but it takes the internal pedals extremely well. The biggest difference between the Mustang and the Katana is the Fender amp has so many different types of voicings for the clean amp. This is why this comparison isn't fair. There's about 10 plus different clean tones built into the amplifier. Now, if you don't own any external effects and you just want an amplifier that has all the effects under the sun and still sounds great on the clean channel, then the Fender Mustang GTX 100 will definitely save you a few bucks there. And it also comes with the foot switch. It's a huge bonus. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the distortion tones on both of the amplifiers and this is where there's a huge separation between both of these amplifiers again. One has dedicated distortion channels that you can choose from and one has so many different ones you can choose from with any combination of speaker cabinets. So they're two totally different things. One's more like a solid state amp where you can just click it over to the gain channel and the other one, the Fender Mustang, is essentially, it's a blank slate. So you get to pick which amp head you want which cabinet you want, all that kind of thing. So they're very different in that regard. Now, in terms of just 3D projection, when it comes to 
the distortion tones. I'm going to side with the Katana again. I think the Katana does distortion just a whole lot easier. Click it over to the distortion channel and you get a really good tone. <laughs> There's one thing to remember though, that the Fender Mustang GTX sounds great clean, and then if you decide to, you can just throw a distortion pedal on that clean tone and get some really great sounds. Some of the amplifier models in the Fender Mustang sound huge. There's the, I love the 70s Marshall style one. The orange one also sounds massive in the room. So they've got lots of throw, but there's some that sound a little anemic, even if you sort of tweak up the sag and all that kind of stuff you'll probably find that it still doesn't quite sound as 3D and as polished as the Katana with distortion tones. But if you just want to run a clean channel on the Mustang and throw a distortion effect on top of that internally from the amplifier, it's going to sound huge. <laughs> so yeah, there's two different amps there. One will essentially give you four different voicings at the click of a button, and then you've got that variation control, which is the Katana. And then you've got pretty much a lot of unlimited possibilities with the Fender Mustang. But I just feel like the strength of the Fender is the cleans with effects on there. And I feel like the Katana's strength is not only how great the clean channel is with external effects and the built-in ones, but the distortion tones sound that little bit sort of just better in my opinion. That's the only way I can explain it. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about usability and functionality with both of these amplifiers. I really feel like one of the strengths of the Fender Mustang is it's got an LCD screen and you don't need the app at all to do anything with the amplifier. You can do everything within the amp and that definitely puts it ahead in my opinion just in terms of functionality. But I gotta tell you, once you get a good sound in the Katana, it's pretty easy to modify it on the fly. One of my biggest criticisms of the amplifier that I had, which I've sent back now, which was the Boss Next Tone, once you get an overdrive on that clean channel, you can't edit it at all without having to hook it up to the computer. Now, they've made some adjustments to these uh, dual pots where you can actually add more or less gain from that effect on the Katana, but you still can't tweak the top end. You know what I mean? Like, you can adjust the overall global EQ on the amplifier nice and simply. It's got a tangible control for that. But if you've got, say, an overdrive or a distortion pedal on the clean tone, you need to basically hook it back up to the computer to modify that. Now, a few people have said, hey, you can hook that your Katana up to an app on the phone. But I to my knowledge, there's no Bluetooth connectivity at all with this amplifier. So yeah, I just can't seem to find any information on that without having to use a physical cable. So, so overall, I'm gonna give the usability and functionality to the Fender Mustang, having that LCD screen on the amplifier, being that it's a full-blown digital modeling amp, makes it easy. I don't need to connect it to the app on my phone. I don't have to connect it to a computer or anything like that. I can just simply use the amplifier to get every possible combination of sound. I think that's pretty cool. Let's talk about updating the firmware on both of these amps. So which one is it easier on? The Fender Mustang makes it so easy. It's not even close. This is one of the biggest criticisms I have with the Boss Katana update procedure. You need to hook it up to your computer. You need to see it as a USB drive and drop firmware files into the folders. You don't have to do any of that with the Mustang. Once you've actually got the app hooked up, you turn the amp off, hold one button down, turn the amp on, it will check for firmware updates and update it automatically, and you can see what's going on on screen. I really like that. Unlike the Katana where you get a, an array of blinking lights to tell you that it's in progress or that it's done, there's a full page that you've got to follow, or you know, a quarter of a page at least anyway, of notes saying how to update the firmware. Maybe Boss could include the updates for the firmware within the Boss Tone Studio app. So if you've got your amplifier connected to the computer, that app will then detect whether or not there's new firmware and it can push it to the amp on your behalf. I think that'd be a much better solution than having to do it manually. It just feels a little bit odd.
Let's talk a little bit about value for money and what you get in the box. Now, I was pretty disappointed to see that the Katana didn't even come with a USB cable, which is required to update the firmware of the amplifier. I mentioned that in my review. No big deal, right? You can just rip one out of your printer if you've got a printer cable and use that. So that's sorted out easily. It was also a little disappointing. There's no option to get a foot switch at a reduced rate or include it in a different package instead of just buying the amplifier on its own. I really think for the Boss Katana, you need the foot switch unless you're going to be using external effects. It really helps the overall usability and functionality of that amplifier to no end. One of the comments I've seen come up about the Fender Mustang GTX 100 is that it's overpriced for what it is. But you also get a seven button foot switch with it and you also get an app that runs on your phone. It's free by the way. It just works seamlessly with the amplifier and you also get a lot more included with the amp than you do with the Katana. The Katana can do so much and what it does, it does really well, but you can do more with the Fender Mustang. And that's why this comparison is apples to oranges. Both of these amplifiers are very different to each other. If I wanted to compare the Fender Mustang to something else on the market, it'd be, have to be something similar to the Marshall Co. They're both true digital modeling amplifiers, whereas the Boss Katana isn't a true digital modeling amp. It has digital effects, but it starts with a solid state clean tone or a couple of other channels you can choose from. So to close out this value for money section, I think they're both justified in their price. One is more expensive, but you get way more with it and a foot switch included. And one is less expensive, it does less, but it does what it does extremely well. So I'm not saying that uh, one's worse than the other in that department. They're just very different amplifiers at different prices due to what they both offer. <laughs> Both amplifiers are loaded with high quality speakers, which is a great upgrade for the Fender Mustang because the one before that was pretty horrible. It wasn't voiced like a guitar speaker, it was voiced like a hi-fi speaker. It's great to see a speaker that's in the Fender Mustang that actually sounds like a guitar speaker again. It's completely changed the vibe of the amp. But the Katana speaker, in true boss fashion, they always seem to load the right speaker into their amps. Whether you go back 20 years and look at some of their solid state amps, they've always delivered the goods on the speaker front. So both amps throw a lot of wind. They're both extremely loud. The Fender is lighter. So if that's a consideration, that might be a deal breaker. But I find both of these amplifiers very, very portable in the true sense of the world. word. If you've ever lifted a Marshall or a Super Reverb or any of these amplifiers that are much bigger, these amps are an absolute pleasure to get around. <laughs> On the back of each of the amplifiers, we have a USB port that we can hook up the amplifier directly to a computer and record directly from the amp to the computer into any DAW or door. That's awesome. It makes doing recordings really easy. But one of the great things about the Fender Mustang, those two XLR outs sound great going into the sound card directly. Now on the back of the Katana, I was shocked just how great the line output sounded on the back of that too. So. It's basically even there, but I'm gonna give the edge just for those XLR outs. I would love to see some XLR outs on the back of the Katanas. <laughs> Now let's quickly just cover both of the apps in detail. Now on the Fender Mustang GTX, you download the Fender Tone app and it goes onto your phone, connects via Bluetooth, and you've got everything there that you could possibly need to control the amp, and it's easy. Most people always have their phone on them, so if you ever do need to change something and you just don't choose to use the controls that are already built onto the amplifier, because you can do everything with the amp that you can do with the app, then you've got it on your phone. It's always mostly around you. So if you do have to tweak something on the fly, you can just load it up and it connects nice and simply. You can also play music through your phone to the amp. 
and then jam along. I think that's pretty cool too. And for this particular kind of space where you're incorporating a lot of digital modeling effects and all that kind of stuff, that's a really cool feature. In terms of the Boss Tone Studio app, I really like it as well. I think it does a lot of things really well. It's a more simple, I guess, approach to the same, same problem. So there's not as many options, but there's less options with the amp. So it's a lot less confusing. It's a lot easier just to get something that you really like straight away. Whereas I find the Fender Mustang to be a little convoluted when it comes to understanding what all of the different amp models are. Because if you're starting out and you're presented with both of these amps, I really feel like the Boss Katana would make things a little bit easier. Whereas the Fender Mustang would be a much bigger learning curve. But I like the app a lot better on the phone than I like the Boss Katana Tone Studio and having to hook it up to the computer, a little bit of a downer. So to close this video out, I just want to let you know my thoughts on who either of these two amplifiers are for. So if you're a home player and that's what you do, both of these amplifiers sound great at any volume. They record well at any volume via the output on the back, or you can mic them up and turn the power down and just get some really great sounds at a low volume. So they're both even in that department. If you're a home player only, makes no difference in my opinion which one you buy, unless you like higher gain tones. And if you want really thick distortion tones that do sound good at most volumes, I would say go for the Katana. If you're more of a blues player and a sort of clean or shoegazer kind of player where you just want lots of delays and you want to be able to stack up delays and effects and all that kind of stuff, Fender Mustang is way better. You can just chain as much stuff or not as much stuff as you like, but more things together. There is a limit to how much you can kind of store on each patch, but you get the ability to sort of stack up different things in different ways, just a whole lot easier and you get more of them. So in my opinion, that would be a better amplifier for those kind of people there. But if you're a classic rock player, you can get great tones out of both of these. I really feel like if you're a high gain player, go for the Katana. If you're a low gain player, the Katana is still gonna be fine, especially if you're gonna be using external effects. But I really like what the Fender Mustang does in terms of its clean. You can't beat Fender cleans in my opinion. I've just been a huge Fender fan for years. And I also feel like the Fender Reverb is something that just sounds beautiful. It's really cool. There's a couple of really good higher gain settings within the Fender Mustang GTX as well, but they just don't quite sound as good as the Boss Katana. So depending on your needs there, then you can make the best decision. Now, in terms of a live situation, I'm yet to try either of these two particular amps out live. I'm waiting to do that and I'll do that coming up on a future video. So let me know what you think. I really feel like anyone who buys either one of these two won't be disappointed with them, especially if you're just a home player. If you're gonna start jamming with friends, both of these are plenty loud. They're both extremely loud. It just, there's a learning curve difference between them. The Katana is a little bit more instant gratification whereas the Fender Mustang GTX is instantly gratifying on the cleans, but to get more out of the drive tones, you've got to fiddle around with it a bit more, and there's far more to learn about it. If the Mustang is lighter, that's a consideration, you can go that way. But if you want the high gain tones and still great portability as well, the Boss Katana is great. This is a real apples to orange comparison. I can't tell you which one is by far the winner here. I like them both for different reasons, which I've outlined in this video. Now, just to let you know, Fender sent out the Mustang GTX 100. They don't pay me in addition to letting me keep the amp or anything like that. They have no input into what I do in my videos. And I actually paid full retail price for the Boss Katana 100 to do these comparisons. So I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Catch you soon. See ya.